on earth. If we were made of some rare element, like, like an isotope of bismuth, <laughs> haven't even heard of that one, have you? Well, it, it exists. If we were bismuthians, right? We could strut and say we are made of the rarest stuff in the universe. We are special. That's all the evidence shows. What is the number one molecule in the human body? The water, number one molecule. And what's the chemical symbol for water? H2O. We have more hydrogen, that H is hydrogen. We have more hydrogen in us than any other atom, any other element. And what is hydrogen connected to in a water molecule? Oxygen. Oh, oxygen is not second here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it, well, helium, you know, helium is inert, chemically inert. Even if it were around, this, it would do nothing to you. It's a completely closed outer electron shell, completely inert. You could inhale it. <laughs> Sound like Mickey Mouse. You could die from inhaling it, not because it killed you, but because you were not inhaling oxygen. Right? Let's understand that distinction. That'd be embarrassing if you died from inhaling helium. I'm dying! <laughs> to the hydrogen in us, and it's oxygen. Next in the body, we are reminded by science fiction writers, we are carbon-based life. Next is carbon. Next in the human body is nitrogen. And next in the human body, together, clients, other, other. Hydrogen and helium is made in the big bang, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and all the other elements on the periodic table are forged in the centers of stars, where it's hot. Thermonuclear fusion takes light atoms, makes heavier atoms out of them. They build up. And that star that undergoes these transformations in the core, at the end of its life, explodes, scattering its enriched guts across the galaxy, planting that enrichment into gas clouds, from which subsequent generations of stars and planets are born. So that, in fact, no, we are not made of rare ingredients, but though we live in this universe, the most profound fact of them all is that the universe lives within us. And if, you, if, if you're upset, if your ego is hurt, learning that we're made of the most common things in the universe, my ego is enlightened knowing that we belong in this universe. We are of this universe. The universe is of us. Here's an image, a, a postage stamp of the universe. Only two objects, the spiky things, are stars, right on our nose, We're, in our own galaxy. We're peering out. Every other smudge and smidgen in this image is an entire galaxy of stars, containing hundreds of billions of stars, out to the farthest reaches of the universe. The Hubble, the Hubble, this is the uh, Hubble Deep Field, not the first generation, Hubble Deep Field, 2.0, all right, where we knew how to do it and we did it better than ever before. So in this image are countless galaxies, each one manufacturing those heavy elements that we described. I was in my home institution, the Hayden Planetarium in New York. We had a show, a space show, where you're sitting there and we zoom out from Earth, and Earth shrinks, and then and, 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 and then the solar system shrinks, and then the galaxies shrink, and you can't even find the Milky Way because it shrinks down to a point, and all the other galaxies come into view. It's a zoom to a cosmic perspective. Shortly after that show aired, I got a letter. I, I got another letter. Yeah, I got a letter. This is from a professor of social and cultural psychology, University of Pennsylvania. Hey, let me zoom in on it, I'll read it to you. Uh, I'm an assistant professor of social and cultural psychology, University of Pennsylvania. I'm writing to discuss the possibility of a research project in collaboration with the planetarium. My research focuses on the psychological experiences associated with feelings of insignificance. <laughs> and I thought, bummer of a job, man. <laughs> Funny, I'm 
home. <laughs> How was your day, dear? Insignificant. <laughs> I recently saw the space show at the planetarium. Needless to say, it was the most dramatic elicitor of feelings of smallness and insignificance that I have yet encountered. I'd be grateful if we could conduct a simple questionnaire survey at the planetarium. What he wanted to do was interview people before they walked in, who were all happy visiting New York, and they go in and they come out all sad in need of counsel. <laughs> I submit to you that upon learning how small our place in the universe is, if after that you need counseling, all that means is that you entered that dome with an unjustifiably high ego to begin with.